Hello folks, welcome to another Bitcoin market analysis by Inspook Crypto. Today, a little bit more dynamic, the whole thing. I mean, it's since yesterday, I would say we are in a transition. The, the big question is, is that just a spring? And my my favorite scenario is going to play out. We will maintain 17K. People will be extremely nervous, short, selling, whatever, and then up. Like last year, without Sam this time, but I guess they will maintain the rule. However, if that's the case, I would be extremely careful. Um, because that was all the time my favorite scenario. Uh, I wasn't the fan, as you remember, where I said we will go to 14, 12 or 10,000. Not yet, because it's not time yet. Because the big, big issue, at least related to economics, macroeconomics, will happen next year. So we will have some time to see bigger lows or lower lows. Um, however, um, we have received a lot of Bitcoins and even exchanges or at least entities related to centralized exchanges, the balances are rising very quick. So the big question is, are we done? That's it? I don't know. I'm struggling. I'm, I'm still waiting as you see. And I don't know who is playing here with DXY, but in my opinion, we are very close here to start a rally on DXY, potentially waiting for tomorrow with the CPI data. Uh, but however, I'm, I'm still waiting to see, you know, some bulls, they are still alive, but it's, it's I mean, the volume is big no doubt but i'm missing a little bit the bullish action to be honest i'm really missing it and nothing big is happening at the moment so we need to see we need to have more patience um i mentioned many times i mean even if it's my favorite scenario at 17k 17.6 where we had a really nice retest before before we did the last leg down, this one, uh, we did our test of um, here of 17.6 and then it went once again down. The question is, it looks like it's wanting to prevent to lose this last support because otherwise we will go down very hard. And SPY SPX are holding like hell just because of DXY. And it's, in my opinion, it's just a matter of time. Maybe just tomorrow when CPI data is going to come out. And that's it. Maybe then we will see the last spring. But yeah, it's, it's really painful at the moment. I'm hatching once again. You know that I love to hatch. I'm hatching on Bitcoin, I'm hatching on Sol, I did on Sol 150% already and now waiting for the next leg down so I can close my long with profit and go over and to, you know, to introduce more money for my short. Because in my opinion, Solana was well protected by, by Sam for a long, long time. And now without Sam, it's going to be a big stress test for Solana. Uh, Solana. So with an unlocked 1 billion in, in volume, it's also here a matter of time. Nobody is going to dump everything at once. But also in Solana, it seems we have all ghosts here playing a bigger role, also following SPY, SPX, because I was observing what they are doing. So... I would be extremely careful if you are just thinking on long Solana, to be honest. I wouldn't do that now um, at the moment. 
However, let us go forward and check what's happening to the market at the moment because everything after a wild session yesterday, now it looks it's it's getting calm a little bit, but I can tell you that it's not happening related to whales. Whales are not indicating we are done here. Instead, they are still very bearish at the moment, also indicating by the weights ratio 30 days moving average. Yeah, we dumped afterwards, we lift up to hitting 50, it's at 48. So if we go up even more, the weights ratio will go up even more too, indicating they are sending more Bitcoins to centralized exchanges. If we take a look, for example, right now here, so I have just refreshed the data just in case of. Uh, but once again, I mean, they went up to 90, just indicating sell pressure coming in. Absolutely immediately afterwards, the price started to dump once again. Uh, what we can see that stablecoin reserves and centralized exchanges, after it dumped very hard, it pumped afterwards. So refueling that's uh, looking like they are refilling their reserves, expecting a bigger demand for stable coins. The question is, is it a bigger demand because they are expecting a high demand or a rising demand for assets or a sell off? One thing C said declared after his announcement of transparency and whatever. For me, it's double moral uh, and double standard because I remember very well what C said did last year and and what situation Binance was. Something that Sam was using it against Binance, tweeting against Binance and so on. So it wasn't not really fair, but however, now to announce we are going to be extremely transparent. Well, why not last year? I remember a lot of tweets, even from my side, asking what's happening to the insurance fund of Binance, because after the big crash of last year, May, April, May, uh, the insurance fund of Binance was almost what's declining, 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 declining more and getting even more in trouble. And I remember no one was talking about, it, at least officially by Binance. Now to say, oh, no problem. We will make everything more transparency. I like it. That should be it, but not now, since years. And, you know, that's something um, to have a high quality market. You have to demand yourself the biggest, the most or the best service. And that's something I'm missing on Tether when they're talking about audit. Well, it's an unregulated market. You know, we don't need to do it. Yeah, that's fine. You are right. From the legal perspective, you don't need to do it. But it's part of, you know, a little bit of the philosophy of the market. If you want to be transparent, if you want to be different to others, then be different to others. And well, however, it is what it is. Um, but, you know, he, so he said, Binance increase their volume in insurance fund. Something that, I don't know why, they introduced another 300 million. And usually, for me at least, that could be a signal that they are expecting a bigger move to the downside. But we will see, at least, we can see here, for example, stablecoin supply lifted up. It's declining once again, and we need to see what's happening here. We received a lot of stablecoins also to centralized exchanges, and we also detected bigger outflows. And when people say, well, but that looks bullish just because of it, I just have to warn you. Every time when someone is selling, at the same time, someone is buying. I mean, otherwise the market would instantly crash to zero. 
So stop thinking only because you see big outflows, we are done. Nobody is expecting a crash. At least I didn't read any influencer or whatever expecting a crash. So you need to understand how the market works. You will always find people that buys. You will always find even big guys that buys. You will always find hedge funds that invested hundred and hundred of millions and US dollars and companies that will fail. That's part of the game. I mean, you know, it's a speculation. You are doing something with a certain expectation and sometimes it works fine and sometimes it doesn't. So don't let you drive by such outflows inflows only because it means for me at least an incoming impact to the price action but if i see that they are selling 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 a lot more than buying and afterwards i see 20000 bitcoins outflow i say okay that's fine of course that has to happen otherwise who is buying why is the market not crashing to zero just make this question to yourself every time when you see the big outflows. You will see some people that wants to buy the dip with the hope to go up. And I mean, Bitcoin will go up, but nobody knows when. In three days, in one week, in one month, in 10 years, nobody knows. So do you know why these people are buying? Is that a long-term strategy, a mid-term strategy or a short-term strategy? If you know that, Give me a call. I would appreciate that. Otherwise, take the data and try to figure out what the market could happen next. Next, short term. Don't try to make any strategies for the long term because it's going to be, or midterm at least, it's going to be extremely, you know, tough to do it because the whole situation, it's not really clear. I would be extremely careful. So we are done here. Let us go forward. I will try once again to make a very quick, relatively inspo like quick analysis. And you know, so let us go forward. So what we see here, for example, and as mentioned, of course, also big outflow, 7,000 here, another 6,500. But at the same time, we received a lot. I mean, yesterday night, 10,000 and afterwards it declined. And then here, for example, uh, almost in three hours, 7,500, another here. 5,000 also within three hours and um, yeah, it's 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 not big. So if we compare all the inflows and flows in general compared to January, February or even June, May, it's not the same. Absolutely not. But it's enough because even the activity of the market declined a lot since then. And it seems we are still missing retailers and even whales are jumping out many of them they are at least still distributing and um, taking out um, stable coins and sending to treasury so but as usual we are analyzing the short-term impact to the market and if I take a look for example here we received 350 millions in stable coins while 312 millions outflows indicating they started to distribute and took out some stable coins while at the same time people someone started to absorb all this distribution the same here even bigger so if we check for example we just had an outflow of 160 millions but one hour later 300 almost 350 millions in stable coins that's indicating they are preparing to absorb as much as they can. So someone with big money is buying. 
And as mentioned, it depends on their strategy. If it's short term, mid term or long term, nobody knows because nobody knows who is behind. Is that micro strategy? Is that maybe a fund that's going to prepare a spot ETF somewhere else or whatever? Nobody knows exactly what's going to happen next. So I would be extremely careful, but the thing is that Bitcoin reserves on centralized exchanges are declining. That's something absolutely very good and that's a positive signal. But in my opinion, they are accumulated so many BTCs on centralized exchanges that we are not done, at least with the soil pressure. I can't tell you about right now, for example, about the price levels. If they want to absorb at 17k to prevent that we can break 17k they can make like last year because it's a very similar pattern like last year that was end of july before we started to push up very hard it was also making lower highs lower lows with the spring a lot of sell pressure but at the same time a lot of bulls waiting to absorb as much as they can and when the sell pressure was done they pushed up very hard. It could happen again, but this time it's different because we are missing strong hands. We are missing no FTX, for example, like last year where they bought 55,000 Bitcoins. And, you know, I, I it's not really clear uh, what can happen next and we should have some more patience. So let us go forward. So what we see here, funding rate lifted up very hard. Afterwards, it started to decline because even the last remaining bull had to recognize, oh, okay, that can take a little bit more. Maybe we are going to make another leg to the downside and that was correct. So, uh, but of interest and leverage ratio, even the leverage ratio looks a little bit more different. So we still have a gap here, as you can see, that's the leverage ratio going up. Open interest maintains declined a lot. They liquidated a lot of longs, for example, even crypto quant is not showing everything, I guess, but we will talk about that also just in a minute. However, um, I need to see my liquidation price here. Oh, we, my long is coming closer to the liquidation level, but my short doing extremely good and making money with it. Okay. That's great. So, um, if we take a look, for example, here, Bitcoin collateral, a lot, a lot of Bitcoin collateral. I mean, um, as you see, but also a lot taking profit. I guess many of them were shorting and taking profit right now. Um, but, you know, I think it's a combination of longs and shorts. I wouldn't say that all these Bitcoins are related to longs at the moment because and mostly because the funding rate is declining that hard. But uh, related to stable coins looks relatively flat. So not happening a lot of things there so if we check for example and that's what i said that's all exchanges and on bitcoin we have here the liquidation chart if you take a look for example last year we had may 19th a liquidation of 50,000 longs i mean even this year, if we take June, we had a liquidation here of 13,400. Uh, we liquidated yesterday 10,600 Bitcoins. If we check the shorts, we liquidated in two days in a row almost 30,000 Bitcoins. So it's going to be very exciting uh, because I guess we didn't liquidate everything and we will go more down to liquidate everything before we go up before. And because that's the big pattern. 
As mentioned just before, go up, go up, liquidate all the shorts. When we are done, we go down. We will go down, we will go down to liquidate all the longs. When we are done, we will go up. Why? Because exchanges need to survive that. It's not a big trouble for Coinbase. Coinbase has, for example, the big trouble right now. They are completely dependent on spot, while even BitMEX is now announcing to introduce the zero fees for spot trading policy like Binance. That's going to, 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 to have a big hit to Coinbase, in my opinion, because, you know, only institutionals may be. They have different, um, yeah, agreements with Coinbase. Maybe that's the only thing that could help Coinbase, but everything else, you see that the market is sitting more and more to derivatives, to options and futures, and less to spot. I don't tell, I can't tell you why that's happening. If some people have insider information about the incoming regulation framework, but fact is, that doesn't look great. And even I don't think that USDC is in risk. I don't really know how much money Coinbase still have to survive more months of fear market in, in case it's going to happen, in case we are not going to have a Christmas ready. Not saying that Inspo think we are not going to have a Christmas ready. Just saying you in case of that could be also a big problem for Coinbase in my point of view. So if we go forward also here on Binance, funding rate declining a lot, leverage ratio rising a lot. In my opinion, we will see just in case I am right and my favorite scenario is playing out they will maintain the current price level, go a little bit lower as mentioned, to kill longs, to collect shorts, and then up. So I would be extremely careful. From here, I can't really tell you what what's going to happen next. We need to, because it's just too early, we need to see, I would like to see more stable coins coming in, less Bitcoins, and then I would start to flip more to bullish, but at the moment it's not happening. Let us go forward. Let us check what's happening here. First of all, something, the first thing I have detected, we had almost 2.2 billions last week. Now we have 1.8 billion, 400 millions less on Bitfinex. What does that mean? If these positions are hedge positions, for example, that means they are reducing their longs positions. While long positions to hedge, they sell spot, they hedge with a low leverage BTC per long, for example, or coin margin long. So, you know, that, that's something it's reducing could indicate they have started to buy spot. We will check CBD later on. I think that the CBD on Bitfinex is rising. Could confirm a little bit my expectation. If that's the case, Bitfinex has, uh, that's a little bit of teaser now, at 16k a wall. So we are very close and that would also indicate to me we will go to 16k, maintain there, liquidate the longs, collect shorts and then up. That's a possible, potentially a possible scenario that could happen and then bottom is in at 16K. Maintain there a little bit, you know, maybe a whole day and then up. But we will see. Because also for Bitfinex and Tether, a potentially stress test is coming because many people are thinking that Binance is going to acquire FTX. Uh, the first communication related to their regulators and the USA wasn't very positive. 
At the same time, Binance US is under investigation uh, by the ECC. So if that fails and they need to liquidate all assets of Alameda and, for example, uh, uh, FTX, remember that almost in 2021, Alameda owned almost 50% of tethers circulating circulating supply you i i hope you get what i'm saying i don't know if that's still the status because i don't have any audit of alameda we don't have any full audit by tether but in case that's happening while we know that no bank wants to work with tether the big question is if they are going to liquidate 30 billions and Tether, for example, is Tether going to pay out all of them? I am not sure. So, you know, a lot of things can happen at the moment. So let us think that these longs were not hedge longs. So just people are saying, okay, I have to reduce my long positions here because they are going to liquidate me any, uh, anyway. However, uh, on Binance, 1.7 billions to 500 millions, also indicating that many positions are still uh, bullish. And even here, for example, on Ethereum, looking like they are expecting to go up very close or close in time. So I still have here some credits. Oh, 10 minutes already. Jesus, I need to talk less. I know, I know. But sometimes I, I think you, you, you know, I don't want that you miss any crucial information. And that's why I tell you as much as I can. So big short liquidation at 21K, a big, liquidation at 14 to 15 for longs or here at 16 here at 90 but nothing absolutely nothing big so they need to make a big move if they want really to liquidate big otherwise nothing is going to happen well i mean we know that if the x and that's that's the most funny thing that FTX was using their algos on Binance because of the liquidity. Now they don't have any liquidity. And now Binance wants to buy FTX. That's really, yeah. So, um, yeah, we have here still a very similar, I would say, identical uh, structure in the liquidation cluster indicating that I guess the whole Alameda and FTX algos are still running. I guess maybe just their whales or however. I really don't know. But, you know, that looks like uh, the structure looks very similar. And so also very interesting. But yeah, also here they need to go above of 20,200 or here below of 40,500 in my opinion both at the moment is not going to happen so at the moment as you see we don't have anything very close to the price maybe here it's 16.7 and 16.2 but that's it so what we see here related to FTX for example FTX extremely bullish that's yeah what should i say i mean we have spot uh cbds here we can see people are shorting even with bitcoin collateral and spot etf uh, spot etf spot cbd also indicating they are not buying big at the moment at least the aggregated one looks extremely flat but if the x started here to buy and since then they purchased almost I would say that's at least the volume delta of 4,600 Bitcoins or something. Crazy, but they are not on their balances anymore. 
So I don't know if they shifted every, they moved everything to Alameda and if Alameda is going to be part of the liquidation uh, assets, I, I'm not really sure. I don't know the contracts and so on and so forth. So, but however, very interesting. Binance indicating they are selling, selling, selling. I mean, we are, if we check here, we can see almost 22,000 Bitcoins since yesterday on CBD. And that's a lot. That's really a lot within 24 hours. If we take a look, for example, to Bitfinex, yeah, they lift it up a little bit, but absolutely, you know, they distribute it very well. So maybe that can confirm a little bit. They are buying a little bit more. And so they are, um, how to say that, but they are right now, you know, closing their lungs, potentially possible. And Coinbase, well, what should I say? I mean, they distributed, and since here, also since yesterday, for example, they started to buy almost like FTX, almost 4,000 Bitcoins, but that's it. That's absolutely it. If you compare Coinbase volume with Binance volume, you can imagine. So, okay. Another thing, uh, let me use, do we have here dark? No, we don't have. Okay, however, yeah, it's I I love uh, the black screen behind or something, but okay. Um, here, for example, we are seeing the Bitcoin net flow daily, and that's I I think M seven like the moving average, so we need to go more to the downside. Oh, oh, okay, of the last seven months, it seems. Of the last 30 days? No. 30 months? I really don't know what that means, to be honest. Oh, 30 days. 30 days. Okay, 30 days. And that's here. 7 days. 7 days. Ah, interesting. Okay, so we need, we can see here very well the whole preparation stuff they did. Also here, net flow positive means we receive more Bitcoins on centralized exchanges than Bitcoins uh, left. If we take a look here for the last 40 days with, um, with a resolution of four hours, we can see that since we are below 19K, so at 18.6, it flipped. They started to purchase. And so here, for example, that's the one hour time frame. Of the last 14 days, we can see very well that here, let me change the color. Since here, they started to bring bigger outflows, indicating they are at the moment purchasing. It looks good, at least a little bit bullish, but we need to see it's too early because that it's also a process and usually that takes hours and maybe even days. We also have a confirmation here that Bitcoin balances on exchanges are declining, indicating they are selling. So we need to see how much they want. I guess the whole thing here was the preparation. You know, that was stable. And the whole thing here was preparation. So maybe if that goes here back, I can imagine that we are done. But, you know, it's, yeah, we need to track that. So it doesn't look that bad, to be honest, at the moment. We need to see if it holds the 17K or if it goes down, then we will have a problem. But we need to see. However, who is accumulating? Well, phew, retailers with less than one Bitcoin buying as much as they can. And I, I like to see that related to Bitcoin, to be honest. You know, I, I think that's what Bitcoin is here uh, for just to give their retailers uh, financial freedom. So I like that. 
Also here, retailers with less than 10 Bitcoins buying a lot, at least uh, rising their balances. We are not talking about hundreds of thousands of Bitcoins. It's, you know, if we check, I can tell you that's uh, 20,000 Bitcoins. But that's cool. These guys here purchased and right now also selling. At least they are reducing their balances. This guy is not doing anything and the market maker entity is reducing even more the balances and that hurts a lot because um, this guy is now when to accumulate and we need to see because we always have a, um, um, a delay, you know, they love to use OTC, also centralized exchanges, but mainly OTC. So when they are done, maybe it takes one, two days before they start to send all these bitcoins back to their wallets so we need to take a look i'm tracking them but it looks horrible it looks really horrible and these entities are related mostly to uh, centralized exchanges and to be honest doesn't look great at all so um yeah i would say that's it as you see here as well let us refresh the site because i guess they are sending more centralized exchanges balances reducing while uh stable coins coming in not huge at all but enough um and you can see here activity on centralized exchanges at least on spot declining more on future stabilizing and that's also something good just because you know it seems that the future market reacts to uh, price movements so if it's flat even the future market goes down when the market becomes more active more future trades happening uh, doesn't work for spot only for futures just just to make it clear um, well, and it seems uh, yesterday, for example, or in the last two days, let me see. Yeah, yesterday, miner sent 2,260 Bitcoins to uh, centralized exchanges. And today at the moment, 1,800 also indicating yeah, it's not huge at all. Absolutely not compared, for example, to what happened in, in June where they send almost 6,700 or here 6,000. It's not big at all, but, you know, uh, it was very flat and now waking up indicating they are doing also something. So, and market maker entities uh, right now cooling down, but a few hours ago, another 1,400 Bitcoins and so on and so forth. And every time, really every time these guys do anything and send, you know the market is going to go down that's every time the same game now we are done let's go forward so on coinbase um they introduced this wall here at 16.5 but reinforced uh with liquidity at 16 but the most interesting part is here I don't know why they introduce more liquidity at 14k like they are expecting to you know to prevent the price could go even more lower so I don't know why I don't have a nice feeling with tomorrow's day because tomorrow just to tell you we will have core CPI yearly monthly CPI for October and also the yearly CPI for October. Um, we have FOMC member master speaks. We have initial jobless claims. Then we have, well, we have three FOMC members tomorrow talking. That's uh, William, uh, Williams, uh, George and Master. And well, uh, that's that's going to be I don't know. It's I, I, I don't know why, but it looks like everything is waiting for tomorrow. Hmm. Maybe tomorrow such kind of sell off because, you know, if you take a look here on Coinbase, the big liquidity starts from here below 16K. Um, 
we need to see. But however, nothing big happened, nothing big coming in at the moment. That's how it looks like. Um, there a bit perp. Also here, nothing big shorting at the moment. Bitstamp spot. They are distributing after they put chased a lot. Also here, look what they are doing. A lot of liquidity between 15 and 14. Also matches very well. Also here, a big cluster. So they are buying and I guess this price is very attractive. Even if they go lower to 14, 15, for example. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, this year looks very attractive. 14,400. Binance Spot. Binance Spot doing exactly the same at 14k. A concentration of liquidity here, you know. But also here at 15.5, uh, also here at 16.5, they introduced a new wall. At the same time, a lot of sell orders to the outside. So, for example, here above of 20k until 22k. So, but you see very well that they are preventing or at least uh, reducing the pace. Not saying they are preventing something, but at least reducing the pace. We have Bitfinex. Bitfinex, as mentioned, they sold, distributed a lot. And you have at 16K. The only big wall they have, it's at 16K. So they don't have anything at 14K. If the perp. FTX perp also here waiting at 15,600. So potentially reduced a lot of liquidity to the downside, I guess, because no money. OK spot. Kraken. Kraken. Wow, look what they did. That looks like algo work. Um, waiting at 16K. Bybit. Not doing anything. Bitmax not doing anything. Reduced even here at 15k, but not doing anything. I don't see here anything. Bitcoin uh, Binance derivative waiting at 15k with the next bigger wall. Of course, a lot of different, um, you know. But a lot of long orders here waiting uh, to get triggered, uh, waiting at almost 19k here with the wall. So even if we go up, we can go down once again. So we should be careful. Bitfinex derivatives, um, yeah, also not doing anything. If we reduce the volume, we'll see they are also here waiting at 16k. I don't know why, but I feel that Bitfinex could be right with 16K. Kraken Futures, nothing. Also here at 19.5 to 20,000, limiting the way up. OKEX Futures, yeah, similar, but looks like Algos. And FTX Spot. A really strange what happened here, but it seems FTX keeps alive. Uh, we have a new cluster of liquidity at 15.3 and some other orders here. And that looks algo, algo work. They remove the cell wall at 20,500 and so on and so forth. So that's it.